Bangiano Cruises. Welcome to another episode of Honest Cruises. I'm Luciano Pavarotti. And I'm Sophia Loren. We're going to bring you the top 10 tips for the Mediterranean so you know what to pack, when to go, where to go, and what to expect. So, tip number one, let's start with mm, yeah. when to cruise the Mediterranean. Well, most cruise lines sail during the spring, summer, and fall. And this is when you'll see the most cruise lines in the area who relocate their ships from other parts of the world. However, there is cruise lines that offer cruises year round. Absolutely. So yes, summer is obviously the best time you're going to get the best weather in the northern hemisphere. So it's going to be nice and warm, really hot, but obviously it's the busiest time as well because you've got all of the school holidays. So if you do want to book a cheaper cruise, we recommend that you sail out of season, maybe in winter, spring or autumn. That takes us on to the next tip. Tip number two, all of the big cruise lines cruise during in Europe, mainly during the summer. So you've got Royal Caribbean, NCL, Princess, MSC, Cunard, uh, p and all of the big cruise lines. And as we say, all of the American cruise lines like NCL and, and uh, Royal Caribbean come over to the Mediterranean during the summer and usually base one or two ships here. So there's much more selection. But there is a wide choice of cruise lines for all different types of budget. So you can see cruises in a winter for less than a hundred pounds per person right up to luxury cruise lines who usually sail during the summer offering a more luxurious and a longer and more intimate experience. Most European cruises are usually around a week in duration but you can get cruises that are a little bit shorter so taster cruises which are usually three or four nights. You can usually find these from Barcelona or Southampton in the United Kingdom and you can get up to two week cruises as well. So 14 night cruises, which take in a broader range of the Mediterranean areas, including Spain, Italy, France, all the way down to the Spanish Canary Islands, and obviously Portugal and Madeira, which is a separate island as well. And you've also got the Eastern Mediterranean cruises, which usually sail from Athens or Rome, offering cruises um, around the Greek islands and down to oh, um, Croatia. Croatia and places like that as well. And obviously the Western Mediterranean usually takes you to places like Barcelona, Lisbon in Portugal, maybe Marseille, Marseille in France or Monte Carlo, and usually all the way up to uh, the United Kingdom as well, where lots of cruises depart from Southampton. So the next tip is what to expect in the Mediterranean. Well, first of all, you've got a massive array of amazing foods. Mm -hmm. So you've got Mediterranean food such as the Spanish cuisine, so tapas, amazing Italian food in Italy. You're in for such a treat. You've got pizzas, you've got gelato, oh. and then of course on top of that you've got all the wine as well. Absolutely. Which you can find, and it's really, really cheap as well for you yeah, to just definitely. walk into the town and grab a nice glass of wine and a slice of pizza or a nice little lunch or something like that. So food is a real big part of the Mediterranean culture. Absolutely, and you've obviously, as David said, the wine is amazing. It's a big thing. We've got France, Spain, and Italy all next to each other. They're massive producers of wine, so you're gonna have a really fantastic time. You've got amazing seafood as well, because obviously all of these ports are on the um, coast as well. So expect some stunning seafood. Mussels, clams, yeah. oh my god, you're in for such a treat. Octopus, a calamari. Yes, we had that yesterday, we didn't did, we? did, yeah, and seriously, you're in for such a treat with the food. You're gonna find lots of just like little boutique restaurants and little food stands and stuff, so it's a great opportunity to just go out and try lots of different types of food. Absolutely, and obviously it's some of the most picturesque uh, places in the world. So make sure you bring your camera with you. You're gonna see beautiful whitewashed buildings, gorgeous architecture from all of the different countries you're gonna visit, which is wildly different from country to country. So you're in for a massive treat, so make sure you've got that camera with you so you can capture every single moment, all of the beautiful sunsets, sunrises, buildings, parks, attractions, museums, Oh my gosh, there is so much to do in the Mediterranean. As Ben said, each port is jam packed with culture. You will be stumbling upon museum after museum, piazza after piazza. It's a great place, not just to wander around to soak up the culture, but to get involved too. You can find lots and lots of museums and these are relatively cheap entry as well or even free in some cases. But that brings us on to our next tip. Make sure you plan in advance yes. because there is so much to do in every single port. We recommend doing a lot of research before you leave, just researching every port and pick the things that you want to do. 
You've also got the option to take on board excursions as well, but these can be usually quite expensive. So what we like to do is plan our own excursions. And you find that using local transport, which is so easy in Europe and so cheap, is really simple, but it also saves you an absolute fortune as well. So pick one or two things you would like to do in every port and just organize it yourself. The Mediterranean ports are some of the most doable ports yourself yeah. out of all cruise so itineraries. A lot of them may are very walkable, you may just need to take a local bus into the town and then from there you can wander around or you can, as Ben said, use local transport options. And if there is something in particular that's very popular that you do want to do, make sure that you pre-book. So for example, the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona Gorgeous. and uh, Picasso's Museum are both very, very popular, particularly in the summer months. And you can pre-book these online. So you just turn up at the time that you're allotted and you're straight in. And just a quick tip, usually pre-booking on their websites is cheaper than booking on the day as well. So we've seen pre-organized tours on the ship go for $150, $100, which you can do if you book by yourself for about $20 per yeah. person. You can save an absolute fortune by doing it DIY. Yeah, and this is the same with transfers into the town. We've seen transfers that are costing $20, $30, and that are actually not even getting you into the town because more, you've got to think guys, most of these uh, Mediterranean cities are more walkable. You're paying $30 really just to be dropped off at the outside of a town when you could take a tram or a metro, a train, a train, a train bus, or you yeah. could even just walk into the town yeah. as well. Do your research before and find out. So that takes us on to our next tip of what to pack. As we just mentioned, you will be doing a lot of walking in these ports. So make sure that you've got some good comfortable shoes, maybe some walking shoes, or just some really good uh, trainers or sneakers. Absolutely. For the summer months, it's going to be really, really hot. So make sure you bring enough clothes that are very light, so maybe cotton clothes, and that cover you as well so you don't get sunburned. Make sure you bring all of your sun lotions as well because it does get very hot. An umbrella as well because weather in the Mediterranean during the summer, you can get the odd storm. So you want to make sure you've got a poncho or an umbrella as well to keep you away from those elements. And make sure that you bring a refillable water bottle so that you can carry water with you at all times as the summer months get extremely hot and if you're going to be walking around in that heat you don't want to be getting dehydrated. Yeah the good thing about Mediterranean though is that you will find loads of shops as well where you can buy bottles of water for just a couple of euros so it's very right. cheap to, to top up on that water but make sure you stay really hydrated because as David said you'll be doing a lot of walking and it's really hot so you don't want to start feeling ill. Make sure you keep completely hydrated yeah. and you'll feel so much better. If you're sailing during the winter months, the weather can be a little bit more unpredictable. This means that like one port you could have quite a sunny day where you need your sun lotion and your sun caps and the next port it could be complete torrential rain. So make sure that you pack for all the different seasons. We really recommend that you pack layers so that you can just layer up and layer down because it may be cooler in the morning than in the afternoon. Also pack a light rain jacket or a poncho that you can just stuff into your bag that you can just sort of whip out if it goes get a light a winter shower. Yeah, it doesn't tend to get freezing. It's usually quite mild in the mm -hmm. winter, but there is odd sporadic days where it is unseasonably cold yes. or even unseasonably hot. So again, even in the winter, you need to be prepared. So our next tip is to stay safe while you're in the Mediterranean. Just like any other port around the world, you're going to get pickpockets, people who want to try and sell you things. So you've just got to be really wary yeah. about these things by carrying money in sensible places. Don't leave your phone hanging out of your trousers or your back pocket. Make sure they're zipped up somewhere, maybe in a coat or a bag which you wear on your front that you can see all the time. Pickpockets arrive particularly in Rome, Barcelona and Venice and also street merchants. A good tip here is just to be firm with them, say no, do not interact with them and then just walk away. Absolutely, with street merchants never accept anything, don't let them put anything on your arm like a wristband because then you are locked into a sale. Just be like David says, very firm, no I am not interested but thank you. Also be careful with street merchants as well because usually they're selling goods that are rip-offs. Counterfeit, So yeah. counterfeit goods, so make sure you don't buy these because you don't want to get into trouble with local authorities and customs. So avoid these and we do recommend buying goods like um, designer goods in the proper shops. Here are some top tips for staying safe during the Mediterranean. We recommend that you carry a limited amount of cash on you and we also recommend that you maybe use a credit card or a currency card instead. All shops in the Mediterranean will take the card so you don't have to worry about yeah, it. Very few. And this is great if you do lose your wallet or your wallet does get stolen, you can just cancel the card straight away. 
We also recommend that you buy an anti-theft backpack so that people can't get into the backpack and that they also have the anti-slash so nobody can be cutting your backpack as well. And also leave any valuables and expensive items on the ship in the safe. Yeah, it's just about remaining sensible, to be honest. It's like any other big city, guys. So just be very careful, just watch out for people around you and just have a fantastic time. Okay, so everybody likes to buy things, don't they, in the port? Absolutely. And you're probably thinking, I'll buy it at the airport because it'll be duty free. Don't, it's going to be cheaper to buy any local goods in the ports. So things like cigarettes and wines and everything like that, perfumes are usually cheaper to buy on land. Don't wait till the airport where they can be a lot more expensive. Obviously check with the regulations as well about how much you're allowed to take with you, how many bottles of wine or liquor or spirits you're allowed to take, and how many cigarettes or tobacco you're allowed to take as well, because European customs aren't quite strict and you don't want to get caught out. But our final tip, guys, is to relax and have a good time. Mediterranean schedules can be quite port intensive. They are really exhausting. And very they? tiring because you do a lot of walking. So make sure you save some time for yourself to chill, relax, enjoy the beautiful scenery of the Mediterranean. One or two days, maybe just have a relaxing time in port, go for a nice coffee, for a nice mm -hmm. local meal. Yeah, don't exhaust yourself because it is really, really easy to become very, yeah. very tired, isn't it? You'll find on these itineraries there's very few sea days. We've usually one sea day on a seven day and two on a two week cruise. And you're not gonna be able to do everything in these ports. You've just got to accept that and just think, you know what? I can do this itinerary again and we can do the, the things we missed out next time. But if you're sailing the Mediterranean, guys, you are in for such a treat. It's an amazing place to cruise and we highly recommend it. We really hope that you enjoyed our video. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified when we're gonna be uploading our next video. We have so much videos coming. We're so excited to what we're gonna be bringing you. And you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you have any comments and questions, drop us a line on, on any of these social media channels or leave them in the comments section below. So that's it till next time. Happy cruising. We need to be French people. You can be so fearful. Italian. Italian people. I'm Luciano Pavarotti. And I'm, what's the name? Sophia Loren. Sophia Loren. You can't right, get the staff these days. <laughs>